Hello, and welcome back to Pre-Algebra with Miss Bensey. Today we are going to be discussing scale drawings and the use of proportion as you're working with those scale drawings, so I'm glad you've joined us for this class. Before we get started, though, I've got a lame joke for you. I think I was missing some of those the last few, so I know that you were just crushed that you didn't have that. So this is actually a math one. What did one math book say to the other math book? Boy, do I have problems, dude. If you are using the same text that I am, I am in Chapter 9, Section 5 of Pre-Algebra for Christian Schools. It's published by Bob Jones University Press. I'm using the original first edition. And I'm on page 293, and we are talking about scale drawings. And our text tells us that a scale drawing is a drawing in which all of the lengths are in the same ratio to the actual length. And a scale drawing, you, if you ever did any modeling, if, if you're a guy and you like, or a girl, and you like to, to put together model airplanes or model cars or maybe model spaceships or something, those would typically have a scale, and they might say the scale was something like 1 to 16. In other words, one inch on that scale was the equivalent of 16 inches, or one foot was the equivalent of 16 feet. So, uh, all of the ratios were correct. It was just like they had taken, I think there was an old movie a bazillion years ago called Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, and they did this ray gun or something. And the, the kids shrunk down to this tiny little thing where they're being attacked by ants, and the ants said there's this great big monster dinosaur ant. But that's ratio, and that's what scale is. When you have something that is to scale, that means that it, it's going to be either smaller than or larger than the, the original object, but everything's in, in, in proper relationship. Like if you shrunk me to scale, right here my arms would still look like the right length for my arms, and my legs would still be the same, the head would still be in the, in the proper proportion. Or if you increased my scale a bit, I'm not going to have a head that fits, that's this big and a body that's this big. Okay, so that's all we're talking about when we're talking about things being done to scale. So in your text you have a picture, and I'm going to just go ahead and hold it right up to the camera, right here, give the camera an opportunity to focus in on this. And this is just a little snapshot of a bridge across a road. And they're going to be solving this example here based on this illustration. I wanted you to see it. It tells us that in this scale drawing, the scale is that 3 centimeters is 10 meters. A scale of 3 centimeters to 10 meters. Now, some of us are not quite so comfortable with the metric system. 3 centimeters is about an inch. You know, just a little bit more than an inch. 10 meters is a bit more than 3 yards. So they're saying that an inch is equivalent to about 10 yards. Or an inch is equivalent to 30 feet. So we want to be able to now Using the fact that we have this scale here of 3 centimeters to 10 meters, we're going to be able to figure out on our drawing what the actual length of the bridge in the picture was. And we're going to use a proportion. And you'll remember that what a proportion is, is it's a statement simply stating that two ratios are equal. So we have this ratio right here, 3 centimeters to 10 meters. And we're going to set up a proportion that where we are using centimeters to meters twice. And I've showed you before how you can use unit cancelization where you're going to cancel meters, cancel centimeters, cancel feet, whatever, to end up with the proper units for the answer to a word problem, because you will use that a lot in science. I'm not going to worry about units here. I'm just going to set up simple ratios here. I'm going to say, okay, if I want to find out the length of the bridge, let me go ahead and say, let B equal the length of the bridge. 
And even though I'm not going to include the units when I'm writing out these problems, I have to be aware, what are the units in the numerator? The centimeters. That means in the numerator we're going to have the measurements from our picture. The units in our denominator are meters, yards. So what we have in our denominator is our real life object that we're trying to find something out about. What we have in our numerator is the picture that is a scale. It's smaller than real life, but everything's in relation, in proper relationship, size-wise. And we want to find out what the length of the bridge is. We want to find out what the length of the, of the bridge is in real life, don't we? So we said, let's have B be the length BB. Let's have B be the length of the bridge. So that means when we solve this proportion here, we're going to come up with what the length of the bridge is. Now, your book tells you that if you measure this bridge right here, that the length of that using a metric ruler is 7.5 centimeters. So obviously, 7.5 centimeters is not a big enough bridge to talk about, especially since I told you that 3 centimeters is just a little, a little bit bigger than an inch. So our centimeters is the length on our picture, length of the bridge on our picture. The denominator is where we're going to figure out how long is this bridge in real life. Do you remember that when we talked about proportions, we said that a proportion is a mathematical expression that tells us that two different ratios, two different relationships, two different things that look like fractions here, tells you that those two ratios are equal. And because those two ratios are equal, we have something very cool here that tells us when you have a proportion that the cross products are also equal. And all a cross product is, you take corner numbers and you multiply them together. 3 times b is equal to 7.5 times 10. And we really, really, really like to be able to do that because that lets us set up a relationship between a scale and find and figure out what the unknown quantity is, what something is in real life, by using cross products to come up with an algebraic expression that we know how to solve. 3b is equal to 7.5 times 10. 3 times b is equal to 75. I don't care what 3b is equal to, I want to find out simply what the length of the bridge is. b has been multiplied by 3, so I'm going to divide both sides of that equation by 3. When I do that, I have that b is equal to 25. I apologize for my cell phone going off in the background, but I can't get to it. b is equal to 25 what? 25 cats, 25 miles, What's the length of our bridge? The units in the denominator are meters. So 25 meters is the length of the bridge in real life. Now when you're doing your abbreviations, remember that M is the abbreviation for meters. MI is abbreviation for miles. Now there are some very, very, very long bridges. And this is not one of them. You look at your picture and you know that there's no way that that bridge is 25 miles long because you have little pieces of a road and an exit here. Okay? But this is all we're talking about when we have scale. So let me go ahead and now do another example for you. Let me move on to page 294. If you don't have the book, it doesn't matter. Just watch what I'm doing. This tells us that the distance between two towns on a map is 3.6 centimeters. The scale on the map is 2 centimeters to 15 kilometers. What is the actual distance between the towns? Now, if you just read that and you think, oh, I've got to be able to answer everything, you're going to get lost in all of 
the information that's given to you. Take it a sentence at a time or even a phrase at a time and sketch it out. Okay, the distance between two towns on a map is 3.6 centimeters because it's a map. Okay, that's about an inch and a half. There are 2.54 centimeters in an inch. This is the distance between town A and town B. And how, how do we know it's 3.6 centimeters on that, on that map? Well, we've used our, our, our metric measuring stick. And we've used it there and we said, oh, that's 3.6 centimeters. We want to find out how far it actually is between these two towns. So let's just have x. We're going to say let x equal the distance between the two towns. Okay, well that's all well and good, but we don't have enough information given to us yet to come up with any form of an equation that we can solve to find our unknown distance. So let's look back at the problem and we say, oh, the scale on the map is 2 centimeters to 15 kilometers. So we have a scale of 2 centimeters to 15 kilometers. This is what they tell us is the scale. Right there is our ratio. Scale is a ratio. We have 2 centimeters to 15 kilometers. We set it up like a fraction. The numerator is the measured distance on the map. The denominator is the actual distance. And they're telling us in this that for every 2 centimeters that you measure on the map, that represents 15 kilometers, which is about 9 miles. Okay? What do we want to figure out? We want to figure out the actual distance between those two towns. Was the distance going to be centimeters or kilometers? Well, duh. The actual distance goes into the denominator, and I have double equal signs there. Sorry about that. Now, we're going to have to have a value here in centimeters in the numerator, aren't we? Because we have centimeters to kilometers. And that's where our measured distance comes in. We've taken a measuring stick of some form, measured in centimeters the distance between towns A and B, and that's 3.6. We now have a proportion, which is this mathematical expression telling us that these two ratios are equal to one another. Because the ratios are equal, their cross products are equal, and you have 2 times x is equal to 15 times 3.6, the cross products. What's 15 times 3.6? 15 times 3.6, 5 6 is there 30, 15, 18, 0, 6, 3. You would go through and do your own multiplication like this. 3.6 times 15 is not 540 though. We have this decimal point to take care of. So 3.6 times 15 is actually equal to 54. We now have 2x is equal to 54, and we're going to divide both sides of that equation by 2, and when we do so, we see that x is equal to 27. 27 what? Let me make sure that that's showing. x is equal to 27. 27 kilometers, and that's the distance between the towns. What were we solving for? We said, let's let x, be, x represent for us the distance between two towns. So the distance between those two towns is 27 kilometers. Don't forget to write your units. That's important. So let's take one more final example. We have a drawing. It says we have this sketch here. 
see what I can do. Won't be quite the same. This is not to scale because the relationship between them is different. We have Bradford and we have Keene and we have Dover and we have Concord. It's interesting, these names sounded very, you know, they're very British names. I don't know about Keene, but Concord, Dover, Bradford. These may actually be towns up in a state in the Northeast. And this tells us that we have a need of changing marker colors here. The measured distance between Concord and Dover is 5 centimeters. Between Dover and Keene is 3.4 centimeters. Between Bradford and Keene is 4 centimeters and between Concord and Bradford is three centimeters and in the middle of our map here it tells us scale is two centimeters to 25 kilometers. This is the only information they're giving you. They're not putting anything into words. They're giving you a picture. <coughs> and what do we have here? We have a graphical representation of four towns and if we're doing line of sight, we're just saying to get from point A to point B, Concord to, Do to Dover, we measure that with our, with our ruler, metric ruler, five centimeters. Dover to Keene is 3.4 centimeters. Keene to Bradford is four centimeters. Bradford to Concord is six centimeters. So, They've given us way more information than we need because we're just looking at a snapshot of a map. What is our question here? It says, find the distance from Concord to Dover. So this is the distance. This is the relationship that we're interested in. Remember when you were first beginning to do problems way, way, way back in elementary school and it said you have two apples and Joe has three apples, and Mary has four bananas. How many apples are there all together? And you had to learn, oh, I don't care about Mary's because she doesn't have apples. She just has bananas. So the information that they gave me about Mary was extra. All of this information here is extra. It has nothing to do with your problem at all. They don't care about this distance. They don't care about this distance. They don't care about this distance. They don't care how far it is from Concord to Keene or from Dover to Bradford. The only distance that they care about is the distance from Concord to Dover. So that was measured as being five centimeters. They want to know how far this is in real life. And right here in the center of this problem is your key piece of information, which is a scale. And it tells us that for every two centimeters that are measured on the map, that represents an actual distance between the towns of 25 kilometers. So, what are we going to say? We're going to say let x equal the distance between Concord and Dover. Because that's what we are being asked to find. Between Concord and Dover. Keep, keep yourself aware of what's in the numerator, what's in the denominator. In the numerator, we have the measured distance on the map. The measured distance on the map between Concord and Dover is 5 centimeters, and we want to find out the distance in meters between these two towns. So our unknown, our variable x, is going to go in the denominator. We now have a proportion set up. With a proportion, cross products are equal, and you have 2x is equal to 5 times 25. 2x is equal to 125, and then you are going to divide both sides 
of that equation by 2 because you don't care what 2x is equal to. You don't care what twice the distance is. You want to know the actual distance between Bradford and, or between Concord and Dover, which is represented by the variable x. So we divide both sides of this equation by 2, and that tells us that the distance between Concord and Dover is not simply 62.5, but 62.5 kilometers. This is how you would come up with the solution to what you're reading here on the map. This is real life applications that we've seen today. We saw scale drawing of, of a road. We saw a picture of a map. And we had something else illustrated to us where um, the second example we did was rather than give us a snapshot of a map, they told us what the map said. So working with scale is something that is a very practical use of algebra. Very, very helpful. Go ahead and work on these problems, and I'll see you next time.